Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. One question people often ask is what's the difference between Metabox and Advanced Custom Fields? Well, one difference is that Metabox has an extension called Front End Submission. What this does is it lets you easily create a front end form for submitting posts or custom post type records. That type of functionality is available for ACF, but only as a third party extension. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to walk through creating a front end form for a custom post type. This is the Metabox website here. You see, if we go and look at the extensions and scroll down a bit, here's the front end submission. Okay, so we click on that. It's available by itself standalone for $49, or it's also available in the Ultimate Bundle or the Lifetime Bundle. And I have a coupon in the video description below. Okay, but going back here, this functionality recently got an update and it's now has integration with Gutenberg and the Bricks Builder and Elementor. And I'm gonna look at using this with Gutenberg, but it's good to know that that integration for Bricks and Elementor is there also. Okay, so if we look at the documentation, one thing I wanted to point out here with the documentation is that there are hooks available for customizing and filtering and whatnot the process. So if you're getting into something advanced, taking a look at these hooks that are available would be worthwhile. Now, I was trying to think what kind of example I wanted to do, and I came across this tutorial on creating a contact form. This tutorial was created prior to the update, so it doesn't show the new quicker way of creating the front end submission form using the integration with Gutenberg or one of the other builders. And it doesn't have a video, so I thought this would be a good choice. Another reason why I picked contact form was because we're always thinking about how to install fewer plugins and if you only need a simple contact form, then something like this is gonna work great. One thing I wanna point out though, is that this front end submission extension is not a full form builder plugin. It's only for creating the submissions for posts and custom post types. Full form plugins have a lot of other features and also have integrations with third party services like you know email providers and things like that. I just wanted to make that clear what the difference was. Now we often need front end form submissions for an event site, for people to sign up, for a real estate site, if you want to let agents or people submit their own listings, maybe for a directory site, same kind of thing. Let's go ahead then and get started. I have a test site here with the Cadence theme. Let's go look at the plugins that I have installed. I have all-in-one WP migration for backups. I have the core Metabox plugin, which is available in the WordPress plugin directory. And then I have the Metabox all-in-one extension. So we see down here the Metabox main admin menu. And if you look at extensions here, here are the list of all the extensions and this all-in-one gives you this easy interface for enabling and disabling different extensions and this way you don't have to download them manually and separately. Here is front-end submission. Okay, so you wanna make sure that's checked. I've created a blank page called Contact Us but you see there's nothing there, it's just the blank page. And we'll be using this for our contact us form. So let's start out, we'll create a post type. So we'll call it contacts, singular name contact. We'll leave all the labels at the default. Let's look in advanced and let's see. Yeah, let's exclude it from search on the front end because we don't want people to find the contact form submissions. 
We will have it show after appearance. And for dash icon, we'll use this one, which has a picture of a person. We don't need it in the nav menus or in the admin bar that's up here for the new. Okay, but we do want it in rest. And we want capability type post instead of page. We won't need an archive page. And we can leave the rest as the default. For supports, I think we can get away with just using the custom fields without using any of these. We don't need a taxonomy, so let's publish this. Now let's go and add our custom fields. So we'll add a new field group. Let's call it contact fields. We'll give it an ID of contact fields. Okay, and let's add our first field will be a text field and it'll be called your name. And we'll give it a placeholder of your name. And the input box will have to be 50 characters and mark it required. And then show in admin comms is another extension. And so we'll enable this and we'll say replace the title because we don't have a title and it'll be submitted by will be the column title. And then columns, this is for layout. By default, it gives you 12 columns, so we'll have it be six, so it takes up half of the space. You can leave those as they are. And let's add a new field. And this one will be an email field. And we'll call this one your email, and we'll have a placeholder for this, your email address. Have this be required in 50 characters. And we'll show this in the admin column right after the your name. Okay, and this will be email, will be the column title. And we'll have this be six columns also. And then we'll add another field. This will be a text field for subject. Okay. And we will not make this required, but instead we'll have a default value just to kind of show how you could do that. Saying contact form submission b50, then go and show this as an admin column after your email. Column title will be subject, and this will be six also. And one more field. This will be a text area, and it'll be message. And placeholder will be your message. And it'll be, let's say, six rows and 50. It's the number of characters across. We'll make it required. And we'll show it an admin column after subject. OK. Let this be six also. So let's close this one up. Now let's go to settings. And we want this associated with the contact custom post type. Okay, so let's publish that. And now let's go look at a record just to see what it looks like in the editor. Okay, and let's look at the all contacts. Here are our columns. So now we don't want to enter them here. We want users to enter them themselves. So let's go to our Contact Us page now. And let's add a message. Uh, thank you for visiting. Please submit your comment or question below. Now, Metabox has a number of blocks that come with it. There's a registration form, a login form, an edit profile form, user dashboard, but we want submission form. By default, it's showing us these. Now here we want to enter the field group. 
and our field group was contact fields. Okay, and we'll enable Ajax submission. Now it's showing our fields here. And we don't need to allow the user to edit after they've submitted them or to delete, force delete, or give them an option to add a second one. We'll choose the post type. Okay, and then the status would be publish. If they were going to allow them to update, then we would have something in there. Okay, we're not going to have title and content because we've removed those. For some reason it still shows here, but it's not going to show on the front end. Now we can customize the labels. So these don't exist, but here instead of submit, we'll say send on the button. Then we don't have, these don't apply. We could have a custom redirect URL if we wanted them to go to another page after they've submitted their contact form. But let's just use this message. Your message has been successfully sent. Okay, and then this one doesn't apply. Now you can enter Google recapture keys to cut down on spam. I'm not going to do that since this is a test site, but the tutorial here has a section on how to do that if you've never done it before. Okay, so I'm going to update now and let's view the page. Okay, so here's our form. I'll fill it out, David McCann, davidexample.com. Now, because I said it's not required and I gave a default, this is what's in there already. So you might not want to do that if you want, you know, each person to say what their subject is, but I wanted to show you that how that worked. So it's just, just saying hi. And the message is, thanks for making this great site. I really like it. Okay, and we'll send. And there's our message. So that's working well. Let's go now and look and see what was submitted. So here's our submission. We can see it here in the admin, or if we wanted to, we could go in here. There it is in the editor. Now, normally when you have a contact form, you want it to send the admin an email or someone an email saying that you got a message sent on your site. The tutorial has a section for doing that. You could add it to your themes, functions, PHP file, or you could use a, a code snippets plugin like WP Codebox or code snippets, something like that. And here's the code that you add. And remember, I mentioned that there were some hooks here. It's using one. And what you want to do is just make sure that your field names match. And if you added some other fields, you know, different ones, and you'd add rows for those here. So that's creating those as PHP variables and then a body variable that has those in there. Okay, and then you want to make sure you have your email address of the person you want to send it to in here. So you need to customize and make this information match what works for your site. Okay, so this is the look at creating a front-end submission form to submit to a post or custom post type. You can see, I think, that it worked pretty well for basic uses. If you need something really complex or sophisticated, then you might want to use a dedicated forms plugin. But for something like a simple contact form, this works great. So there's a text summary of the video on the WebTNG website. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps to spread the word. Hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.